Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. It's Wednesday, October 11th, 2023, and we got a little bit of green coming in. We've got some inflation numbers that are coming out today. So we got a little bit of a futures rally as uh, yields hold at lower levels. So we'll see if we get some continued upward movement or see what happens with uh, CP with the CPI numbers. I think it's CPI. Is that the one that says? I get so mixed up. So many, there's so many different things that come out. Had a good day yesterday. Tesla finally worked out for me yesterday after the... Got off the live stream, it took off. It's it's the PPI number that came out, which measures inflation at the wholesale level before it reaches consumers, climbed 0.5% in September from the previous month. And on the annual basis, prices are up 2.2%, largest increase since April. That doesn't sound very good. <laughs> so there's the bell. We'll see how... Market reacts here, but I always tend to be a little careful. Like I mentioned before, when we got some numbers that come out. You're just pushing up a little bit here. Golf 122, NASDAQ. Up seventy seven, S and P up fifteen. Morning, rookie trader. How's your Rick results? I didn't put on any reverse iron condor. Well, maybe you, you, maybe that was for the zero DTE channel. I'm paper trading the iron condor right now, not the reverse. I'm still got to make a point to um, go through that course in its entirety. So I'm just uh, been paper trading the regular iron condor. So I'm up about eight grand since the beginning of October. Um, so. 
And I'm not really like, I'm probably not following the rules to a T in terms of when to put on um, an iron con- iron condor or a reverse iron condor. Um, so the first part of me, like just learning how to trade it is just to learn how to enter it all in. Right. Cause that's the first, you know, you, you gotta know, you gotta know your platform and how to enter it all in. And so, uh, you know, then once, once I just really figure out how to enter it all, then I'll really uh, hone in on, okay, when's the ideal time to enter it? When's the ideal time to not enter it? Certainly with the, with the iron condor, there's a little, you know, so you got to put in an OCO order, a trail stop, you know, there's more to just putting that on. So that's, that's the first thing I want to master is just being able to really do that with the greatest of ease. Getting our second bar here now. So we will look for some volume. Fix down 3%. Let's come back down to 16.5. It was up uh, last week up to 19 something. So we're looking for a volume bar bigger than the previous one and in the same direction. If you see one, don't hesitate to post it in the day trades channel, day trading chat channel. Getting a lot of initial green bars here pushing up. So I, I haven't seen much on the, Inflation numbers, but it, well, from what I read, it didn't seem positive, but this would be the fourth day in a row that the Dow has 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 gone up, so. NVIDIA getting some volume here.
So we've got uh, a couple minutes left here in NVIDIA. It's about three-fourths of the way there. Same with Roku. Boeing's another one. It's about three-fourths of the way there. Right, blockchain is a smaller stock, but it looks like it's getting going to get a downside runner possibly. If you're looking for something smaller to trade, Goog, getting close. One minute left here. I think NVIDIA is going to get there. It's coming down a little bit, so I'm going to look at jumping in calls here. And I would trade the 46.5 calls. 46.5. Jump in here. Build at 665. That, that's the 46 point, uh, 462.5, 462.5 calls. Uh, yes, Piton's still on my list. It's such a small stock, I don't really trade it, though. But there it is. It's like it got a bar to the downside. It's got an opposite bar there. So Roku flipped red. Meta also got a bar. It's big as just about as big as the first. That's interesting. Boeing was really close. So I would consider that an upside volume bar. You could definitely get a better fill than I did on NVIDIA, that's for sure. Thought I was getting a pretty good fill right there. Again, I'm always a little more cautious on uh, times where there's numbers that come out. Uh, Meta, pulling back a little bit. I was going to look at that. Ah, man, it popped right back up. I wanted to get, I wanted to jump in on this pivot right here. It moved too quick for me. Just moved too quick for me. I've got an order at 7.30 to close half my NVIDIA. Look for some mighty 90s here as well. So Meta may be coming back down a little bit. So I'm going to look at Meta again here. 325 calls. Trying to get filled at 470. Build at 470. Those are the 325 calls for an upside volume runner in Meta. Pull back to that pivot a little bit. Boeing really fired up, man. 
That's what I wanted NVIDIA to do. Square getting a big volume bar right now to the upside, but it's kind of flipping back and forth. I've got an order at 520 to close half my meta. Home Depot really coming down. So it's just playing my stand mechanical here. Staying with the rules. The NVIDIA to hold here. I'm going to add to my NVIDIA. Filled at $6 to add to NVIDIA. So it took about a 10%. It went down about 10% from where I originally got filled. So hoping if it pops back up to my original fill, I would get out of half. And if it pushes through this blue line here yesterday's high, I would bail on it. So hopefully that makes sense. And if someone wasn't in NVIDIA, they could have got in for the first time right here where I got in. Because um, sometimes volume runners are quick trades if, if it... If it ends up being a failed volume runner and it, it goes through your your point where it, you would bail on it, I mean, it could be um, something that is a quick turnaround. Square looks like it, it, it had this, man, it's got this big red bar, so I'm not going to play anything in square right there. It's opposite the first bar. Roku coming down through lows of day. Or right down the lows of day. NVIDIA is right there at yesterday's high. See how it's see how it's bouncing off yesterday's high. That's what I want to see. Not quite sure though what to think here of this market with the CPI or the PPI numbers that came out. Build at 520. Hey, look at that. Build at 520 in meta. Oh man, it came, it got pushed right back down though after my fill. Whoa. That's interesting. I thought I was going to, I thought it would take off there if I got filled. And I've got an order at 660 to close half my uh, NVIDIA. So some interesting price movement here. Some pushing up. So that's, I can see a lot coming down here, man. We've got Netflix coming down, Apple. But NVIDIA is holding for the moment. Boeing pushing up had another big, big uh, volume bar. Baba pushing up. Have not have not gotten any good mighty nineties this week. Definitely getting definitely been getting volume runners though. <laughs>
Ecan G looks like it might get a little mighty 90 short. If you want a smaller stock to trade. Yeah, I was kind of wanting to get filled on half my NVIDIA here because if things do turn and get weak, at least I'd be getting out of half before it turned over. Nothing, nothing shaking here in terms of volume setups yeah. on my first page here. I got an order in at 570 to close another meta. We'll see if it can push through this little 10 minute consolidation right here or not. I like getting mighty 90 longs when the markets are, are green, but got a couple bar pullback on a lot of these stocks, but nothing, no mighty 90 with the volume. I'm just not really liking the price action in NVIDIA. You know, for a volume runner, you want to pause and then push. It's coming down. So I'm looking at I'm looking at potentially getting out of it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a second, see if it's gonna dip its toe below here and then pop back up. But you can see Roku pushing lows, Apple. I didn't think the PPI numbers were very good, so I, I I was a little conservative on my, my, my got in. So I'm going to go ahead and close it. I filled at 560 in NVIDIA. Just went, failed volume runner, went down past right here. So you can kind of see things. I wondered if things would turn over and get weak. The days that are hard to trade is when you get a push up, push down, and then maybe you get another big push up. And it's like, which direction are we going here? See, I, I wouldn't doubt it if NVIDIA pushes back up and rips through highs of day. That happened to me yesterday on TKNG, I think it was. It pushed down just below where I wanted it to go, and then it just popped back up and ripped through highs. So Apple potentially getting a mighty 90 here. So I want it to push down.
I'd like to get in at lows here. Yeah, see, look at NVIDIA. I wouldn't be surprised if it pops right back up. So that's why you always look, you know, monitor your position sizing when you're getting into trades on days that you got these numbers that come out because you could get some swings. Target really falling. Good. Really pushing through highs. Whew. So Apple. Oh, I forgot to tell everybody. We're trading the two DTE today. Two days to expiration. Apple, I would trade the 175 calls. Try to get filled at 320 here. Build at 330. So I had to adjust it a little bit. That was the 175 calls. So I'll look for two green bars consecutive. See, Meta really held, man. It, it held when a lot of stuff was pushing down. Boeing held. I'll get an order in at 365 to close half of my Apple. See, like Mighty 90s, when you get a big push down and you got a good volume pop like Apple did, it was getting close to as big as at first, but still, it's it's clearly not near, not as big as the first. Dow up 63, NASDAQ up 60, S&P up about 10. So they've come down a little bit. Meta, not really moving. Yeah, this is like a square. Big push up. And it's nothing but red since. That makes it hard. See, like Tesla. No mighty 90s or nothing. That volume's just flat across. Meta, looks like it wants to come down to the pivot again.
The VIX is down 3%. That was pretty close to getting filled on half my apple there, but it looks like it's it might get us one green bar. Boeing is also holding, so it could be potential upside continuation. Need to get I'd like to get out of half my apple here. Build a three sixty. To get out of half of Apple. So I adjusted it a tick. May or may not have been a good idea. Down comes Meta. So Meta, really, this blue line yesterday's high would be my exit if it goes through that. Got one green bar and apple. Yeah. Things seem to be getting weak. Boeing is still holding though, man. I'll take a little chance on Boeing here. Upside continuation runner. 195 calls. Build at 455. So it's been holding and just pausing. So if it comes down to this pivot, I might I might add to it. If it pushes through the pivot, I'll probably close it. Meta, I, I honestly could add back into Meta if I wanted to. Let's see where that's at. Okay, Meta's down at 4.15. It's kind of popped back up. So I'm going to hold off on Meta adding since it's popped back up here. I've got an order in at $5 to get out of half of my Boeing in case it pops up and hits me. Microsoft really coming down, but not giving us anything in terms of volume. Apple might be giving us a second green bar here on this Mighty 90. So I'll be closing my apple here. This bar ends as long as it stays green. Man, 
the thing's getting weak. I may just close it out. <sighs> yeah, I think I'm just going to close it out. We're about, well, it's got about a minute and a half left. I'm just watching other things dropping. Other stocks dropping. So I'm going to close it here. Let's see if I can close it at 370. Build at 360. So, huh, I mean, I'll take it, I guess. I wanted to get a little better fill, but it's just struggling a little bit to push up. And it may rip, but a Mighty 90, we want two green bars here because it's a long, Mighty 90 long. And you can kind of see it's just kind of struggling. And everything else I'm seeing pushing through lows. Boeing is holding. So at least I booked a positive profit there in Apple. Microsoft might be getting a little mighty 90. Take a look at that in think or swim. Yeah, it's a little mighty 90. It's already popped up though. Build at five dollars in Boeing. Close half. Nice little push up right at the start of this bar. Yeah, see Apple Apple pushed up, but oh well. Winning trade. But you can kind of see what a continuation runner looks like, although this this actually did have big volume. It paused and then continued to push up. So I guess this really was a volume runner. But that's what, if it if it didn't have big volume, that's what we look for. Push up, little pause, and continue higher. Apple pushed up still. So Meta, not giving me much here. With Meta being a volume runner, I mean, that's not the price action I like to see. Get out of another BA here at 550. Five forty-five. Filled at five forty-five. Decan, Decan G pushed through highs there. So Meta is no bueno. So. 
going to do a little experiment with meta. I'm going to add to it. Filled at 390 to add back into meta. So it can't, here's what I did, guys. So it came down and bounced right there. So it came down again. I was wanting it to bounce, which it's doing. If it would have pushed lower, I just would have turned around and closed it. So we've got um, a minute left on this bar. And as long as it holds above right there, then I would be fine. And I'll close half of my meta position at four. Mm, 450. So adding to it is a way to get profits back and get out of contracts, which lowers your risk risk on that uh, particular trade. Want to get out of half on this push here before it turns around and co starts coming down. Roblox two highs of day. Build it 450. So it worked. It worked, ladies and gentlemen. Three contracts left, I believe, in Meta. So on this pullback, I went in with six. I got out at, at, of three on the push up, and it came back down. I added three more to give me an even amount. Back to six, got out of three on the push up, got three left. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm in Boeing and Meta. So not the easiest day to trade, but doing pretty good here. Took a loss in NVIDIA, but you can see how it just got under yesterday's high, but has since bounced all the way back up. So I would have gotten out of more. Baidu, big volume bar to the downside. Keep an eye on that. Get out of another meta. We put this in at five bucks. So since since Meta was a volume runner, I mean, if it doesn't continue upward, I'm just going to cancel. I'm going to cut it. I don't want it to come back down to where it was back down here. The apple rolled over. It had a little three bar bounce and then rolled over. Costco, a little three bar bounce, rolled over. 
Baidu popping up a little bit. Not really sure what to think here. Baidu might flip green before this closes. <laughs> Oh, Boeing had a mighty 90 short. I didn't even see that. See that? Mighty 90 short. It's already come down. Get, looks like it might be getting one red bar. Futures coming down to lows of day. I do with a monster bar. That is huge. I don't always like to play those just really huge bars that aren't normal. And you bleeding lower. Looking at bailing on my meta here if it doesn't get going. Just because it's a volume runner and you just don't you don't want to see this tight of a range on a volume runner. So far, so good with Meta. Just keeping a close eye on it. Ricky Trader. Great to see you. Um, I mean, all I'm doing is... The, re the reason – here's the reason I do it the way I do it. So all, all it is is all it is is clicking on a – clicking on a um, – buying a call or buying a put, you know, clicking on one or the other and adjusting to what I want to get filled in and hit confirming and send. That That's all it is. And then when you close it, you just – you just uh, – you just go to close and you adjust your contracts how many – how many that you want to close. I mean, so when I do that, I want to, I want to make sure that I'm keeping, keeping this price action here so I can see price action too. I mean, there's not really, there's not really a trick to buying calls and buying puts. It's not like you're putting in multiple orders in terms of like, you know, like that iron condor zero DTE where you're having to put in an OCO um, trailing stop. I mean, it's just, it's just clicking on, a, clicking on the call on the put. 
Yeah. So, so for example, um, let me see if I can, let me check our, check my stocks real quick. Okay. So like, um, so Apple, 330. I got filled at 330. So what's 10% of 330? That's the question. What's 10 what's 10% 10 of 330? I guess that's math you should just be able to do in your head. Anybody? Anybody? Thirty three cents, correct. So, so if I got filled at three thirty, what would be uh, what would be ten percent? Three sixty. I just I rounded it, so thirty cents. So, uh, so as soon as I place the trade, or as soon as I get the fill, I just go in and put um, close trade. If I did six contracts, I'll adjust it to three. I'll adjust it to three sixty. Confirm and send, and then it's just a working order. That's all it is. And then let's say I got filled at 360. Well, what's a, what's what's another 10%? So another 10% would be another 30 cents. So uh so then I start scaling out like one contract at a time. So then I would put it at 390. Okay, if I got if I got out of half at 360, another 30% is gonna be another, I'm sorry, another 10% is another 30 cents. So 360 plus 30 cents, 390. And then, like yesterday on that road, I think it was that Roku trade. I was getting like, I got I got filled at like two twenty or something. So like twenty cents every twenty cents, I was scaling out a contract. Uh, so like Nvidia, like today when I added it, six bucks. Okay. So what's 10% of six bucks? Well, that's 60 cents. So I would put, I would get out of half at 660. So, and then the more you do that, the quicker you become. And so I like to, I like to keep price, it's this price action here in front of me. And also like when I'm placing the trades, like I've done it for so long now, like I've got, I've got my broker on my right screen. I've got this on the left screen. Like that's what works for me in terms of it feels really awkward when they're switched when you've done it for so long. And then I'm also like showing a lot of learning is showing people like a lot of people ask me about getting in and getting out and the price movement and all that. Um, so, I mean, I'd be constantly switching back and forth if I if I did that. So meta, okay, so meta here, I was talking and I need to focus here. So 325 call. So so I, my last fill was at 450. So 45 cents is another 10%. So I need to get out. So I'm at 505, 510 right now. So I'm going to set an order. I'm already, I'm already past that 10%. So I'm going to fill an order at 510. Filled at 510. It was it was it's above five ten now, so I probably probably could have set it for a little higher. So I got a little more than ten percent on that one. Good question though. Good question. People like to see where I'm getting in and why I get in over then over just clicking on buy and clicking on put or, or calling put. So Boeing hasn't really gone anywhere here. Okay, so if I just got out of 510, so I have two contracts in meta left. So let's let's take a look at this. So I got out at 510. The original, my original order, I got filled at 470. Then I added in at 390. So roughly 40 to 45 cents is another 10%. So 510, another 45 cents would be 565. So I'm going to place another order to get out of another contract. Oh, see, it's already went above it. <laughs> so it's great when this is happening. Okay, so I'm just going to, now I'm just going to try to get out at another 10% at 590. P 
filled at 590. So this is this is your your question your question was a good timing. So I've got one contract left. So 590 plus another 45 cents. Let's just say another 50 cents uh, would be 640. So I could close my last contract at 640. Or I could just let this run and see how high it goes since it's my last contract. But you can kind of see I, I added in at 390, got out at 450, 510, 590. I got one left. Uh, Steve's not here. This is, this is Chad. Um, but is NVIDIA showing mighty 90 signal? Uh, yeah. So NVIDIA is showing a mighty 90 right now. Correct. So might not be a bad. So, so is meta right now. So I'm probably just going to get rid of this last meta. Jeez, look at this push. This is great. Okay, so I'm going to try to get out of my last meta at 640. And I may adjust that. Yeah, I'm going to adjust that. Build at 620. So I'm out of all my meta. And the reason I did that was because it's showing a mighty 90, although that's a pretty big bar, but it's not as big as the first. So that would be a mighty 90. Uh, NVIDIA, so yeah, I mean, so it, this would have been a good spot to get in. I didn't get in NVIDIA because it's coming up on 930, and I don't take many trades at this time. But that is a good-looking mighty 90 signal. So that, um, let's see, La Souza, that's your name. Um you know, if I'd have had this probably 20 minutes ago, I might have took that. But when it gets to be about 9.30 central time, I'm real cautious about any, getting in any more trades. Good questions today, guys. So Boeing, I'm still in Boeing, and it just hasn't gone anywhere. You always, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's, I don't do any stops or anything. It's just a manual close. Not very often do you just scale out and you finally get to your last contract. And but that's happened to me two different, two times in the last two days with Roku yesterday on that upside volume runner. And then with, with meta today, it's always beautiful when that happens, <clears throat> but there might be times where like, and I've got like Let's say I went in at eight contracts. So I might have three left and I'm just getting out because maybe it, it, it broke through a certain consolidation point or a pivot or, or something. So like Boeing, like if it breaks down below here, I'll just cut it. Even though I've only got two contracts left in Boeing. I started with six. I got out of half and then I got out of a quarter and I've got two left. So if it goes below this, you know, this tight range here, I would just close both those out. If it pushes up, I'll scale out. So here, here, here this is another little lesson here since uh, on that same topic. So I got in at 455. So 455, 10% of that is, is what? $4.55. What's 10%? Anyone, anyone. Yep, 45 cents. So I got filled in half. So, so after I got filled, I went in and put a closing order for three of my contracts at $5. Because 4.55 plus 45 cents is five bucks. I mean, that's easy math. Okay, so, and then you look, if you look at like, let me go to the day trades channel. So Boeing got filled at 455, closed. Uh, 
looks like Amir has it wrong. Okay, so he didn't. Amir, you got it wrong here, bud. It should have been I got out of half my Boeing at five bucks, and then I got out of a quarter of my Boeing at five forty-five. So after I got filled at half of five bucks, I put in an order. I have three left, so now I'm going to just scale out one at a time. So I got out at one at another forty-five cents. So essentially, now that's out of twenty percent, twenty percent profit, and I had two, and I have two left. So apologize there that that's incorrect in the day trades channel. We have a mirror that types those in. Yeah, so closed. Oh, there we got it. So yeah, so got out of half of my Boeing at five, and then I closed a quarter of my Boeing at five forty-five. There you go. So here, uh, here's another thing. You know, when you get down to like two days to expiration, one day, you know, tomorrow with one day, sitting in a trade where it just does this, you start getting some faded decay too. So that's something I always go back and look at. So let's take a look at my Boeing. So let me see if I can pull this back over here just for learning purposes. Okay, so Boeing 195 calls. They're currently at 485 is where they currently are at. So I got in at 455. So if those get down like below 455 and theta starts to decay, a lot of times I'll just I'll just close it out if it's if price isn't going anywhere. I mean, we're talking 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30 40 minutes, and it's got a range of A little over one point on a two hundred dollar stock. Okay, so here's here's a here's a good lesson on. I got a mighty ninety signal, so I got out of my last meta. Now, in this case, both Nvidia and Meta would have been beautiful mighty ninety shorts to get in. Uh, those have been both would have been really nice winners, and you can see the volume pop. Like that's important. Like this has a really good volume pop. I don't like them when they're just like barely higher than the previous one, but both of these were significantly higher, especially Meta. And so I, I you know, I, I bailed on my last contract in Meta because it was giving me the setup. And very rarely do I just turn around and bet. And, and and trade the exact same position I just got out of. So I would have been more, you know, if I would have gotten into one, I probably would have gotten into NVIDIA here. Also because NVIDIA is coming up to highs of day where it already got rejected once. So that's a good Mighty 90 setup. So that's a good call out. Um, again, I'm not sure. Lasoza. I like it when people call them out because that helps me. So, so on if some if you would have gotten in on Nvidia with this second red bar here, now you would close it close out your mighty ninety for uh, for a winner. But after nine thirty central, it's just they're not as it's you know price movement slows down. It seems like they're not as successful. So. So Boeing is just hanging on, so I guess I'll give it a little bit longer. Let's 
see now nvidia has flipped green so it hasn't given two red bars consecutive so if i was in a mighty 90 in nvidia here i would hold it as long as i would continue to hold it as long as this bar is green and i would hope hope that i would wait for two more consecutive red bars so you know i've had mighty 90s where this has happened i got out of half on this pullback maybe i got out of a quarter on the on this push down and then it popped back up and I continue to hold for two consecutive red bars. And then it goes down and it flushes through lows of day. Like those become really nice winners. Uh, when you're exiting for a loss, do you have a set loss amount? Like 10%? No, not really. It's all based on it's all based on the criteria. So like a mighty 90, 95% of the time, even if it's a losing trade, I will wait for two consecutive bars in the direction I want. 95% uh, of the time. The 5% where I might bail on it would be, let's say I'm long and something just came out in the news and this huge flush is happening. And I would bail on it. Um, in terms of like the, the volume runner. So the volume runner, let's go back to NVIDIA. Okay. So the volume runner, when am I going to bail on it? So the rules are you bail on it. If it pushes through this point right here, because it's the bottom, so this green bar volume bar is the biggest, or I'm sorry, it's big as big as the first, right? So this is where that bar started. So if price comes back and pushes through that, I, I bail on it. Okay. And so this is where it, and it just so happened that NVIDIA had this blue line here, which is yesterday's high. So that's another key level. So that's where today, when it pushed through that blue line, I bailed on it. Now it happened to push back up, which I wish I would have held it, but then it ended up coming right back down anyway. So um, so whether that was a 10% loss, 5% loss, 15, 20% loss, that all depends on my fill right here. You know, if you got in down here, it becomes a small losing trade. So that's why it's important to get, try to get good fills on a continuation runner. You're going to get out. So let's just use Boeing. Let's say Boeing, you know, this this is a volume run as well, but let's just say these bar, green bars weren't as big as this one. Let's say, you know, they were like this size. So a continuation runner, it pushes up, it's it's consolidating, you, you're getting long, hoping it continues, but it's just now it's just chopping. If it were to push below this key level of this consolidation, so let's say it pushes down through here and it comes down close to this pivot, I would bail on it. So Again, that could be a 10% loss, 20% loss, 5% loss. Depends where your fill was, if that makes sense. So there's no set loss amount or no percentage loss. It's just all based on the rules of the strategy. So hope, hopefully that answered your question. And, and the more you trade, like, you know, I've been doing this day trading now for probably three years i've been leading the leading the live stream since april of 2022 um but i was doing i was actually doing the day trading with when steve was leading it for probably a year prior to that so you just you it's like with anything the price movement that you that you see you get better at making those decisions because you've just seen the price you just want you know an hour a day of watching price movement um, for almost three years, like you get good at, you know, anticipating what's going to happen. And then you get a feel for the market, where it's going. You're checking the VIX to see what it's doing. You're checking other stocks, maybe that are tech stocks. If you're talking about it, if you're in, in on a tech stock, what are the other tech stocks doing? It's just, it's just, you know, just watching all of those things. It's, you know, you just get better at it. Just the more you, more you do it, more you watch. There were there were days when I was, you know, before I 
was trading every day. Like I would just sit there and watch price movement. Yeah, maybe I traded two or three days a week, and the other two days I just sat there and watched price movement when I was learning. See, like this is just really as Boeing is just, I mean. We're back. It's back down about where I got in. So <clears throat> I'm considering bailing on my Boeing. Even though it hasn't pushed down through this consolidation, like, you know. Yep, that's, that's correct, Jim. Yeah, I think I'm going to bail on my Boeing. I mean, we're sitting here talking about 45 minutes of not doing anything. And then you've got like, you know, squares coming down to lows of day. Let's take a look at some of these other. Well, you know, Apple's pushing up. See, Meta gave two red bars. That would have been a great mighty 90 right there. NVIDIA never, never gave its two red bars. See, now things are pushing up here, though, so... I don't know. You know, sometimes I just get impatient with some of these stocks too. I got other things to do during the day, you know, and when it's like, well, how much, how much would I really lose or gain here? If it just, I got two contracts left out of my six. Square just has no volume today, really. NVIDIA looks like it wants to push through highs of day. So in a situation like NVIDIA, let's say I was in that mighty 90. Let's say I got out of half, got out of a quarter. It comes back up here. It may be a situation where I reload, add back to it, and then maybe it'll give me two red bars. And that, you know, that, that trade becomes a you know from a small winner to a big winner. Like, let's just say I would have added right back up here at the top. It's already gotten pushed down once, twice. That's kind of what I use key levels for. See, if I would have added back in here, chances are, as it's coming down here, I'm now going to get out of half again. And then maybe you get another red bar that pushes back down to here, and you're, then you close it out. Big winner. Had a lot of mighty 90s like that, too. All right, I'm going to close my Boeing. It's just not going anywhere. So 195 call. I oh, see it's already, and it's already, yeah, it's really lost some theta decay there. Try to get out. See, I got in at 455. Try to close it at 450. Four forty five. Build at 445. So ended up getting out a little below where I got in, mostly because of theta decay and because it's coming down a little bit. So all right, guys. Um, I will be back tomorrow. And then Friday, you get Steve's soothing voice, which I'm sure is a lot better than mine. So Hope everybody has a great day. Good questions today, guys. Definitely like the interaction a lot. It seems like lately, like nobody's posted anything. Um, so and paper trading took the NVIDIA trade that you you did, but did not exit. Set me in PT target. Okay, good deal. Did you did you take that mighty 90 short? Uh did you take it when it came up to here? Uh, did you take this mighty 90 short here? Oh, okay. Yeah. Just the volume runner. Yep. Oh, but, oh, but you, you did it close when I did. And so when it came back up, you were able to book a small profit. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. You just got to be careful with that because, um, 
you know, if it would have kept going down through lows here, you, you, it probably would have turned into a big lose, losing trade. So once it crosses that, once it crosses that, you know, the rule is if it crosses through right here that you get out of it, um, you know, this time it worked for you stay in it. But I've seen volume runners fail where then they get weak and it just continues down. And then, you know, a, a couple hundred dollar loss turns into a six hundred dollar loss, you know, depending on how much you went in for. But uh, as long as you as long as you position size, as long as you position size so that it doesn't hurt your account and you're OK with it continuing down because you want to see if it's going to bounce. That's fine. But that's not the rule. Right. So but uh, that's why position sizing is so critical. So, OK, so here you can see good out in Boeing. See how this has come down now. It's just a volume runner. You want to see it eventually take off, and this just never was, so I bailed on it. So, all right, guys, I will see you back tomorrow. Have a good one. Peace.